Okay, welcome to our eBay training today, everybody. So today we're talking about uh, spring. As it's currently March 4th right now, I thought it would be appropriate to just discuss a little bit about what we like to do for spring moving into that season. Um, a lot of opportunity. I'd say spring is one of my more profitable times of year just because of the nature of the type of products that I like to sell on eBay. So, um, and I'll, and I'll share those products with you today. Also, you know, Christmas leading up to Christmas is a very profitable time. In addition to the back to school season tends to be a really good time of year for me. So we're getting out of the, the doldrums of the, the winter months and we're getting into some better, I think more profitable months if you know how to take advantage of it. So I wanted to go over, uh, what we can do to prepare for spring how to know what to sell, where to go to get those items, types of products. You can see some of my notes here on your screen already. Um, I want to talk about, first of all, what to sell, okay? Because a lot of you guys, this might be your first spring selling. Some of you guys, I think this is your second. Um, I don't see anybody who's been here for more than um, that period of time that's here live. So first or second year, um, what do I sell, right? Weather's warming up. What are people interested in? Well, number one, let's let's use other retailers first of all so for example here is target.com and you'll notice on their homepage they're going to start promoting what target feels like is going to be in season so they're they're promoting they're promoting the swimwear swimwear right now here on their homepage but you'll also also notice they've got this thing called spring central here it says everything you want for warmer weather shop spring okay so i'm going to actually click on this shop spring link and this is going to clue me in onto what kinds of things Target is promoting for spring, right? You're seeing sandals, you're seeing chairs, towels, umbrellas. This is more like beach stuff, right? Um, as you scroll down, you see sort of like spring dresses for women, um, accessories they've got. You scroll down further, you see my favorite market, the outdoor furniture market, patio furniture, patio accessories, so on and so forth. I, I can tell you with a surety, these guys have marketing divisions and merchandising divisions that know a whole heck of a lot more about marketing and what people are going to be buying this year than, than you do or anywhere else online. I don't pretend to know it all. These guys throw... Uh, millions of dollars at this type of research. I'm going to piggyback off of what they're suggesting, okay? And they're suggesting some pretty good obvious things. And I'll look around at a bunch of retailers. I'll check out Walmart. Same thing. If I get to Walmart's website, I see some Easter products being discussed. Um, their first part of their uh, of their slider here is a March Madness um, uh, slider or or, or uh, advertisement. Right, college basketball is going to get really popular, and with March Madness is going to come team apparel, uh, televisions, uh, you know, furniture, entertainment center furniture. As people are watching March Madness and college basketball, right? A lot of opportunity there for stuff like that. Turn over to Overstock. Overstock is another place that I like to kind of just see. You know what are what are they advertising here on their on their slider? They've got um, outdoor furniture here prominently. They're on their homepage. Wayfair I like to look at. Wayfair is super trendy. We talked about them a little bit last week, but I'll look through their homepage and see some of the things that they're focusing on. Um, you'll see some spring stuff show up there. Sears is another one. Sears on their homepage right now is is promoting Springs 50 Sensations. They call it. And if you click under here on Springs 50 Sensations, um, they give you a big list of things for them that are going to become very, very important for their springtime sales. So you're seeing these uh, these um, craftsman buildings, right? Sheds, that type of stuff. You're seeing lawnmowers. Um, you scroll down, you're going to see outdoor furniture, not surprisingly. You see barbecue sets. You see... Um, outdoor play sets for kids, that type of stuff. In fact, that's a really great market. Make a note of that. Outdoor play sets, trampolines, that kind of stuff. Awesome stuff. You're even going to notice some camping stuff here. Okay. Sears is one of my favorites because they, they outline a lot of really good stuff. 
spring inspirations. I want you to look through this section. That's going to give you some ideas as to maybe how you should direct your listings. Um, Home Depot, same thing. Na name your retailer. It almost doesn't matter because all the major ones know what they're doing and they know exactly what's going to be selling for spring. So I know that seems like kind of lame analysis, right? Just just look at what, what major retailers are doing. Well, it's the best analysis I can offer. Um, you're not going to get better ideas. These guys know much more about marketing than all of us do combined. Follow their lead, okay? Okay, so let's go back to our notes here for just a second. We covered check other retailers. And by the way, let me know if you've got questions as we're talking about um, talking about things. Uh, Russell, you said, is Sears a good retail drop shipper or drop shipping option for us? Uh, it is. It uh, Sears went through a rough patch there a few years ago where they, they had some inventory issues and you uh, you couldn't really find products that would stay in stock very consistently. And so that led to a lot of out of stock issues. They've been better about that in recent years. Their shipping has been better. So yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad option as well. And specifically, Russell, their outdoor furniture section is, is one of the very best. So this Enjoy Outdoors section, you're going to see huge markdowns. Um, check out this one right here. It's not uncommon for them to have big, big markdowns on stuff. Uh, normal $600, they've got it for $300. This entire patio set for, um, you know, for $300. Bucks. Plus, um, shipping looks like it's it's uh, going to be like 60 or 70 bucks, so you'll have to keep an eye on that. But bottom line is they have really good outdoor furniture deals. It's not a bad option. It really isn't. Um, Judy, I you know, yeah, bigger items have bigger costs for sure for shipping, but when you're working with major retailers as your suppliers, a lot of times they have such huge shipping discounts that you can have a giant piece of furniture shipped and it doesn't cost them hardly anything. And a lot of times they'll just offer free shipping to you. So look for those free shipping items in, in the furniture area. Uh, you'll be surprised, you'll find a lot of them. Sears has it a fair bit, but you'll, you'll see them charge delivery fees here and there too. And that's fine, just build that into the price of the product. After all, it, according to this, regular 600, you're getting it for 300 plus $70 shipping. So that's 370. You're still getting a screaming deal on this. So yeah, you want to look at those costs when you do bigger items. But I got to tell you, patio furniture, and we'll talk more about it here in just a second, is is by far one of my favorite markets for this. Um, yeah, St. Patrick's Day is coming up for sure, Elizabeth. That could be an area we look into. Jacqueline, you say so? Do they only have a seven-day flyer like Walmart? just to know how long you put up a listing for. Uh, yeah, clarify that. I, I guess I'm not 100% sure what you're referring to. Sorry, I think we moved on since you had asked that. Yeah, I mean, sale, it's interesting, Denise. Denise says, uh, do you have to keep an eye on how long that sale is for? Um, you do, but you know what's funny is a lot of these companies will claim it's a sale when in fact, 299 is what they're going to sell it for all season long. So initially, if you've never used Sears before and you're going to start cranking out their outdoor furniture, keep an eye on their prices because I don't know if they're going to be the types that are going to move them around this year or not. They could leave them the same. They use that sale price to make it look like you're getting a good deal when in fact for them that 299 is really what they want to sell it for. It's hard to say. You just have to get used to it with your supplier. Okay, so I also want you to consider Google Trends for just a little bit, okay? I, I've showed you guys Google Trends before. This is google.com slash trends, okay? Google.com slash trends. And this helps my clients and myself see what's currently trending, okay? Now, it's kind of fun just to play around with because you'll see currently what's trending. Lots of Donald Trump stuff right now. Um, O.J. Simpson, over the past 24 hours, has spiked because of this new research they're doing with this knife, apparently. Anyway, you can, you can, you can check out like what's trending, but that's not why we use this. That's more just for fun. I, I would come here and I would type in something like, you know, patio furniture, just to see kind of how it trends and what month it's going to be most popular. 
And I love Google Trends because it's basically pulling data and aggregating it into a little graph. And here's, here's the graph for patio furniture. This shows interest over time for the search term patio and furniture. And you'll see it's, uh, it's very cyclical, is it not? It follows a very distinct pattern year after year. The peak is in May, the low is in December. Are any of you guys surprised by that? You shouldn't be, right? Because when are people buying outdoor furniture? In the spring. And so you can look at the graph and you can see March is here most months, kind of in the middle of the uptick is March. Um, just April is just shy of the of the summit there. April and then it seems like May. Most years, May is the month for outdoor furniture. And it come it trails off a little bit in June and in July and in August. So you've got from about March to August where this is a decent market. This this has and it and a year after year, right? There's no question about it. Look clear back to 2005 and it's no different. March is midway up. April's near the, near the top. May is at the top. June, July, August. And then it slows way down and then goes back up, so on and so forth. Cool, right? It's this is this is Google Trends. It's going to help me figure out when I should really get serious about listing certain things. Now, I'll show you more of this as we look down here in the my list section. I, I just wanted to share with you sort of my list going into spring here. Outdoor furniture, one of my favorites, okay? So maybe make a note here, but outdoor furniture, number two, gardening products and tools. This is really in no particular order apart from the fact that outdoor furniture for me is up at the top. Gardening products and tools. So that would be like wheelbarrows and 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 pruners and trimmers and out you know backyard greenhouses and composters and everything that you'd use out in the garden three barbecue products and barbecue grills is good outdoor decor outdoor rugs you know wind chimes outdoor clocks all sorts of you know decor type items spring sporting goods pool supplies with with pool supplies very specifically inflatable products i know that sounds kind of funny but the the kids inflatable stuff that they take out to the pool actually sells real well um beekeeping and i said number seven think think specifically um in into very very niche related fields uh there's there's a lot of beekeepers out there that that do a lot of their product buying for new hives and new beekeeping uh, products in the spring in fact we could verify that if we go to google trends we could type in you know beekeeping up here and just see what kind of interest is there and and test if it is in fact cyclical and sure enough check this out this is going back to 2000 uh 2005 it's it, you know it was it was trending down but still cyclical you can see now it's very cyclical and you'll see peak is in april may june april is the peak april april May is the peak in 2014. Last year, April was the peak. May, anyway. So you can see like beekeeping products, beekeeping as an industry is really in vogue in the spring. Verify all this stuff. I mean, you can, you can do all sorts of different fun things like this. I mean, something that may not be so cyclical might be like, you know, kids toys or something. But is it cyclical? Oh, there's no doubt about it, right? But where is it really peaking? No surprise, November, December, every single year, November, December, November, December, okay? It's always got demand, and that's the thing you got to know about these graphs. There's always demand for this stuff, even at the lows, but you can see where it peaks. And that's where we want to take advantage of these different markets. Uh, maybe we do something like pool toys. Yep, June, 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 June. So June, obviously, right? Oh, July back in 2013. Last year, June was the peak, June, July. So there you go, guys. Like you can verify peak months. Um, I don't know, we could do another one. Let's do uh, college basketball. 
Whoops. March. Does that surprise anybody? March Madness, right? March, March, March. So you have to think, okay, if college basketball is particularly interesting to the masses in March, what should I do? How should I take advantage of it? And you can look at the retailers. You can start listing, um, you know, gear and memorabilia and apparel and so on and so forth. So I just think this is a really cool tool. This is google.com slash trends. If you're a data person, um, you'll enjoy looking at this stuff, okay? Back to our notes. I want you to look up here at number three just really quick. I'll zoom in on that just a little bit so you can see it better. Number three, um, under what do I sell, uh, your own data is some of your most useful material. So if you don't know, and based on our, our training today, you're not sure kind of what area you want to you wanna emphasize, maybe you want to try a big variety of this kind of stuff uh, because guess what? your data is going to be more valuable than anything else. Just because Google Trends say something is very hot, you know, maybe it doesn't sell as well on eBay. I don't know, but we have to try it. You have to get in there and start creating listings. And eBay will provide you with some data, some analytics, some feedback um, that, that you can use to decide what's going to be best to use going forward. So, I, I mean, that's what I did. I remember back in the day when I was kind of in a lot of your guys' spots, I, I – I did a little research online and then I uh I just started to try things and and now I I kind of have my list here of things that I know tends to work really well. Specifically, let me tell you why I like this niche right here, this outdoor furniture. A, it's a huge market. I I can't remember the stat, but it's during the spring every like 6 seconds uh, a piece of outdoor furniture sells on eBay. So it sells like crazy. Second thing is it's not driven by brand and so people don't tend to shop for the best brands or the best prices on brands people shop for outdoor furniture based on visual appeal because they only buy outdoor furniture once every little while once every few years once every five ten years whatever so they don't know the top brands they just want to find a piece that fits their deck that's the right color that fits their scheme that's what they're looking to do. So there's not a so so people generally will pay more for outdoor furniture. And I like I like bigger price items anyway because if I can sell a piece of furniture for 500 bucks and make 15 or 20% on it, I, I don't mind taking home 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks off of a sale. You sell three or four items a week like that and you're you're actually making some money, right? So I just think that's a good market. I think these other ones are good too and I'd encourage you guys to try a big variety of them. Um, because in springtime, um, that stuff is going to be definitely in demand. Now, just some dates to keep in mind real quick, just so you kind of know what's coming up. Um, March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. So, you know, I've never, honestly, I've never sold a lot using St. Patrick's Day as a as a springboard. I think there's, there's party products you can sell, um, but, you know, there's not a ton. And you'll notice that a lot of the retailers don't advertise it too heavily apart from like, you know, party products, right? Green party products. You'll see some green apparel, but I don't think there's a ton of money in it. You can check it out for sure. March 20th is the first official day of spring. Uh, March 27th is Easter coming up. Um, that's another interesting one. I, you know, People spend money, but you think about Easter, it's it's chocolate and it's low margin items. And, and so I, I don't know how much there is there. Mother's Day on May 8th is a pretty big holiday. Um, in fact, it's one of the biggest retail days or leading up to Mother's Day is one of the biggest retail selling times of the year. So a lot of gifts for mom, right? And you'll start seeing that advertised a little bit more on these major retailers. So just some some important dates coming up as we get into the summer. You know, you got the 4th of July, you've got some other dates that'll become important. And then after we get out of spring, summer, it'll be into the back to school season where there'll be some opportunity there. So there's always something in season, but keep in mind, guys, you know, you want to, you want to list with an emphasis on what's in season, but at the same time, you don't want to leave your bread and butter. So if you've got products that have been selling, maybe it's baby products, maybe it's uh, office furniture maybe it's some type of electronic or jewelry, continue to sell your bread and butter, but 
on your newer listings emphasize this type of spring springtime stuff and uh, take take what's in season take what's trending okay yes there's lots of competition for this kind of stuff out there but that's okay um, there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity okay um, yeah you can definitely combine them for sure Cheryl so questions about this guys I, I, I didn't want to go into any more detail I feel like this is more than enough data and research for you um, don't don't be one of these people that that researches yourself into paralysis right we call it analysis paralysis don't do it um, you'll sit on Google Trends trying to figure out hey what's that perfect niche to get involved in they don't exist there's no perfect niche there's just lots of good ones so take advantage of what you have uh, the best research you can ever get is the research you're, you're gonna do yourself so get listing Research isn't really action. It's just research. Action is getting out there and putting products up for sale. Okay, I'll give you guys just a minute for questions. I, For the most part, this is pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of questions, that's fine. In fact, I think I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the recording. If you're watching this recorded, um, thanks for coming along. I hope I hope this helps you out as you as you decide what kind of product lines to focus on for your spring-summer sales.